Welcome to Focused on Forward. The purpose of this podcast is to focus on recovery from life situations, be it a disease, chronic or acute, perhaps the loss of someone so dear to you in death, or a change of life patterns that has affected you so profoundly that you have no choice but to find your new normal and become focused on moving forward. Each episode is designed to show the positivity that people bring to each and every one of their stories, the successes they've had, ways that they have become so definitively focused on moving forward. We look forward to sharing their stories, and we hope that they inspire you just as much as they have inspired us. Thanks for listening, and enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to Focused On Forward. Today we have the absolute pleasure of talking with Joshua Schubart, who's an up-and-coming actor. You may have seen him in uh, such roles, uh, his current show, After, or maybe you saw him uh, chasing around a, a blue beetle-looking fellow with antenna on top of his head in the Amazon Prime show called The Tick, which is where I got to know Josh from. Uh, so very excited to have Josh here today. We're going to talk about Josh's upbringing and some of the challenges that placed before him, but then also we're going to talk about how Josh was able to become focused on forward and move past those things. So Joshua, thank you very much for being with us today and thank you for being on focused on forward. Thank you so much for having me here. This is, this will be awesome. Probably cool. Yeah. I, th- I think we'll have a good time. So me too. Uh, what I would like to do, Josh is, is turn the microphone over to you. Okay. And have you talk about uh, your backstory and I'll jump in every now and then with some directional questions. All right, cool. Um, so I'll just uh, begin, I suppose at the beginning, as they say, <laughs> um, way back when, way back when, when I was a, uh, we, we lad. Um, basically, um, I had an absentee father. He l- l- left the picture when I was about th- three or four years old. And my biological mother was bipolar and an addict. Um, and she loved me very much, but she was unable to care for me or and or, f- or for my two younger sisters who c- came um much much later um but um it was a weird time um mental illness wasn't handled in a in a really nice way back back in the mid 80s early 90s um it wasn't really spoken about it wasn't really handled in a way that made any sense it 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 was a lot of trying to like quote unquote quick fix everything and then like kind of push you back and back back out into the world mm-hmm. so as Result, I moved around a lot, bounced around a lot, um, and ended up homeless for a while, um, and then ended up in foster care when I was 14 years old. Uh, that's like the quick version. Um, but I lived with my biological mother on and off for most of my young, young life, uh, it was positive for, I would say like 20% of the time, whenever she had her act together and she could hold down a job and, um, she would inevitably come off of her medication when she was well again, because that was kind of, that's, that's kind of a thing that like happens with, with bipolar is right. once you feel good, then Stop taking you, the meds. you don't take meds anymore. Yeah. yeah you, t- um, you tell your, you convince yourself that you don't longer, you no longer need them. You don't need them to function. Right. Um, and so that kept happening over and over and over again. Um, so when I became homeless, I was in my early teens. Um, it was largely by choice, actually, just because I couldn't live live in that life anymore. Um, she had turned, turned into a pretty terrible hoarder to the fact where um, the bathroom was just old food, dirty dishes, um, containers she was um prostituting herself for money so that so so that she could get you know feed her um addictions and things of that nature so it became a very strange on unhealthy environment um so i kind of went out on my own and around this time i had two younger sisters who were very young um and i would head out and i would 
acquire food for them in any way that I could. And then I would bring it back to them. And then I would try and get food any way that I could, which was, which was usually um, getting into crazy fights with like the other members of the homeless population um, or t- t- taking it from the local supermarkets or anything like, like that. Uh, when I when it was hot, I would live in the park in one of their slides, and when it was cold, I would live in a clock tower that was on top of a CVS. Um, okay. So that, that that was an interesting part of my life, to say the least. How how long um, did the homeless section of your life? It was like not? three to three and a half years of my life. Okay. Um, it wasn't like it was like I was homeless all the time. Like I would be with my biological cousins for like a c- couple of weeks or like I would hang out at my friend's house for a c- couple of days. But I mean, at the end of the day, like I wasn't in a home. I was like moving everywhere, just tr- tr- trying to survive. Mm-hmm. And then um, when I was 14, um, my biological aunt and uncle took us all in. So it's called Kinship foster care and that's when members of your own family become your foster parents it's the exact same type of system but it's but that's just what it's called okay um and that's kind of when everything sort of changed um they enrolled me in catholic school because they thought that i needed you know rules which i ultimately probably did i mean i have i had i had just come off i i just come off the i i just come off the streets and i was pretty wild Um, and I also had a pretty debilitating trauma induced speech impediment. I had a terrible stutter to the point where I couldn't speak more than two or three words in a row period. Okay. Um, and then for whatever reason, I heard an announcement about the school play and I went and when I walked on stage, I could speak in complete sentences for the first time in my life, probably since I was like five or six years old. How cool is that? Um, yeah, it was really cool. And uh, I was, I was, I was also doing a lot of bad things. Like I was doing a lot of drugs. I was hanging out with, you know, terrible people just to try and get by. Um, and then once I found this art that let me speak and be a human being again, I just quit all that. And that's what I've been doing ever since. It gave me this like psychotic motivation, I guess, to just build myself a better life. And that's what I've been doing, <laughs> sprinting at it ever since. Yeah. Okay. And and how old were you when, when you did this play? I, I think 14 years old. 14. Okay. Yeah, it was like right away. Yeah. Okay. I thought that you had said that, but I, I, I must have missed it. I apologize. Okay. No, it's cool. All right. So, yeah, that's that's a lot for a young man to take in. Mm. in a lifetime and and how does that that upbringing you know because e- even though you you're clearly past it you're as a as a uh, an adult now but how does your upbringing as a young man affect you even today so for a very long time it was hard for me to trust anybody uh because you're always trying to see who's trying to like uh t- take everything from you uh because when you're homeless um on less you find your people, mm-hmm. um, there are other people that want what you have. Um, the, the, the homeless c- community is a very kind, very caring, very open, wonderful community. But at the end of the day, everyone's trying to survive. Sure. Um, so, um, and if you're a kid in that community, some people are trying to take care of you. Other people are trying to exploit you. Um, and others might be trying to hurt you or worse. So, right. um, I, I would say that it, how, how it affected me positively, because we, we could go on and on about like how it affected me in a negative way. And that's what I used to do. Right. Like, that was perfect. Like through, um, lots of, lots of cognitive B be, behavioral therapy, which I highly recommend, um, it's incredibly good and incredibly powerful tool to help help you move through anything from like terrible, awful trauma to, you know, a divorce to getting hurt to anything. It's such an inc- powerful learning tool, incredible tool. and therapy. Um, but 
so I used to use my life as an excuse for why things were going wrong all the time. Um, right. If I wasn't focused, if if a thing went went wrong, it was like, oh, no one ever taught me this. No one ever helped helped me know what this was. Um, and it wasn't until I flipped that, and and that wasn't right away, right? Like e- even when I found acting and I knew what I wanted to do with my life, um, I was still, you know, it, it wasn't like a perfect line. There, right. it was pretty me- meandery and moved moved around a lot with me still trying to find my sure. place in the world so it's not like you went to bed one night and you went you know okay i'm done with that tomorrow morning waking up everything else is going to be different that's not way that's right that's not the way life works no like it's not a pixar movie now <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly yeah. okay so but but how did you start making or taking the steps to be able to be, to focus your life and move forward so there were were some very clear role models in my life that I didn't realize I had until many, many years later. Um, and they were educators that I, that I hadn't had in my life while I was in this period of my life. Um, I knew that in order to get out of my current predicament, I needed to continue my education. So despite being homeless, I was going to school still. Um, and there was an administrator named Sean McLeod, who I still have to have to go find um, be, because I was moving around so, so much. But for whatever reason, it was him and an English teacher when I was in middle school, um, when I was in, uh, when I was living like part time with my biological mother and I was also homeless at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, I got really into Beowulf in old English, like super into it. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. And yeah. And they, and they took a notice about me that like there was something about me that maybe not special, but like took an interest in things that most most other kids wouldn't. Um, so Mr. McLeod um, kind of took me under his wing and would continually say to me, like, the only way out of your life is education, Joshua. Like you need to focus as hard as you can to get out of your own life. And I remember he took me to this conference when I was when I was there still when I was in school. Was, I was I was in ninth grade at the time. OK. And it was like a bunch of people who had lives like me were speaking on a panel. And he took me to it to kind of t- let me know that there there is light at the end of the tunnel and at the time, I remember being so angry that he took me here, like hearing these people talk about how they had come out of their horrible circumstances angered me to the point where I had to walk, walk out. And at the time, I was a pretty heavy smoker. So I was just chain smoking cigarettes. Um, and I remember him him asking me, like, why did that make you so mad? And I told him, like, I don't see a way out for me i don't see a way out like these people found a way out i don't know what it is i can't find it okay um so but many years later now knowing what i know those moments with those people with with him and my old english teacher whose name i don't even remember um profoundly helped me understand like i need to get on a certain path and i think and i think sub subconsciously that was in there in the back of my head so that when acting came into my life, it aligned kind of like perfectly. And I was like, there's the thing like there, I need to get on this train. I need to ride this thing because this is what they were talking about. Excellent. So you, you mentioned a few moments ago, the importance of, of therapy. And I wanted to circle back to that because one of the things that, that I've talked a lot about on focused on forward and, and, um, you know, both on the mic and off the mic uh, in my personal life is with other people is the importance of of men reaching out for therapy. Yes, uh, because I think we live in a time and an age where there's there's such a stigma attached to men going and, and seeking out help and, and talking about, you know, because, you know, we, we come from a, a bunch of generations where, well, men don't talk about feelings and we don't talk about this and we don't talk. We just suck it up and move along. Um, so what did you have interior obstacles for you to, that you had to overcome to, to start going to therapy? 
like did any of those stigmas play a role for anything with you or was or were there other things that, that you i wanted to go really badly okay um i was not doing well and i knew that i wasn't doing well and i think watching what happened to my biological mother you know really uh, uh, really affected my whole I- idea of what i needed to do for myself like she while she wasn't a classic quote unquote role model, she taught me exactly what you aren't supposed to do right. and how you're not supposed to raise children. Um, so I jumped into it pretty heavily, maybe too heavily because there were times where I freaked out my therapist. Um, I, I remember, um, so I used to be really into like really violent comic books. Like there was this one specifically, um, Johnny, the homicidal maniac, mm-hmm. um, that I really connected with. And it wasn't because he murdered people. It was because he was murdering people because he needed to paint this wall in his house with blood or horrible demons would blow out of it. And no one believed him. Then he got caught. Then he got put into an institution and then horrible monsters blew out of the wall. And that's what I was connecting with more than anything else was that there are these things inside me that I need to, to take care of and I don't know how. And I'm and I'm and I don't know how to express myself. And I like and I brought this comic book <laughs> to my to my therapist. And I was like, hey man, I was like, um, I really connect with this book. Uh here, check it out. And then he read it and like and 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 the next session he like he was like, uh, uh um, uh you know, and I was like, no, no, I don't want to kill anybody. <laughs> <laughs> He's over there typing know? your name into a watch list. You know? Yeah, exactly. Okay. But, but I mean, it was, it was like an outlet, you know, like there were other ways to, because I've got my, my, my own things, you know, I've got mm-hmm. rage and anxiety and sure. depression, sure. And, um, things that I'm constantly keeping under control and that I'm constantly doing meditation for and positive self-talk and all that stuff that that you're supposed to do um so it was it was a long road through all that stuff and also coming to understand that things that are abnormal for most folks can become like pretty normal for a person like like me and like how I express myself may not be right in line with how the quote unquote normal world does, right. but it's just how I'm moving through my own life. Right. Yeah. I, I get that. That makes sense to me. So uh, one of the things that you mentioned was cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. Um, yeah. And so, you know, with my, my backstory and, you know, with my, my daughter uh, in 2019, my daughter was hospitalized for 97 consecutive days. Oh my. And uh, 33 of those, she was in the uh, ICU. She was paralyzed from the neck down. We almost lost Holy her Christ. twice. And so coming out of that, my, my wife and I had some some issues, some some mental and emotional traumas that had to be unpacked. And and so that's, you know, one of the things that for me is that I fought going to therapy because, again, it was the, well, you know, I'm a, you know, one of the, the primary sayings that we had around my household because being big hockey fans. Uh, you know, hey, if a hockey player breaks a uh, a bone, he's you know he gets it set on the bench and he's out for his next shift. And you know, you suck it up, you're a hockey right. player. And so right, we right. used to say that all the time to the kids when they were growing up. You know, suck it up, you're a hockey player. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, okay. You know, but uh, funny thing is, none of us were hockey players. We're just hockey fans. Anyway, yeah. uh, so anyway, what for for me, I had to learn how to navigate around my own stigmas and, and preconceptions of what therapy was and what therapy wasn't. Sure. And, you know, um, and so with, with my therapist, one of the things that, that we did, it, she used CBT with me as well. Um, and I agree with you. It's a very powerful tool. Once you, if you buy into it, if you buy in, you have if, to buy it. Yeah. Uh, uh, the first couple sessions I, I, I did not, and, you know, I, I was basically wasting my time, her time, just kind of spinning my wheels. But once you kind of buy into it and you start working with it and you work the process and you start, you know, using the tools and the techniques they give you, it can be a very powerful tool to help you past some of those things. 
do you remember any specific um, tool or technique that you that your therapist helped you with? Because I have one that that mine that my therapist gave me that uh, that I still use to this day. Yes, yeah, same. It's um, um, small goals. Okay. Was was it? It's it's a thing that has always c- carried me through everything. Is like, you know, w- w- do like work from this point, like point A to point B, not from point A to point Z. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like, how do you walk the path to ultimately get to where you need to go? Whether that's like, you know, for this p- particular part of the way that you feel or, or what's kind of happening to you or, you know, and just each, each point is a new question. Like, why is this a thing? Why does this feel this way? Does, mm-hmm. does this make, make sense? You know, and that, and that has helped, helped me in, my life in my marriage in my in in my acting career a lot just sure. applying that mindset to my career has made me extremely successful be, because i'm not like freaking out all the time about everything you know yeah. like <laughs> yeah. yeah uh and that's actually one of the ones that that my therapist helped me with was small goals the other one is one sheet and i don't know if this was if this is something that's used across the board or if this is one that she just made up but either way it worked and she called it stop um yes yeah. and so for me a lot of my my issues centered around negative thoughts negative thinking uh i uh, certain nightmares about different things um and so telling myself to stop it seems so simple and it seems so stupid that, you know, golly, gee, why didn't I think of that? You know, but, you know, so I would sit there and I would tell myself to stop, stop thinking about this thing. And then she would have me replace it with two to three positive things. Yeah. Which is what I do too. It's such a cool tool, man. Yeah. Like, and, and I actually say it out loud to myself. Yeah. So, and I don't care where, where, where I am either. Right. Like, like, cause my mind will just go, all twisted it'll go nuts and i'll just and i'll and i'll do the same thing like like i'll be like no stop like that's not what's real you know like right. this is what's real and this is what's actually happening yeah it's so it's so cool how you can just quickly change everything right yeah yeah it was it was kind of crazy to me how like i said the, just something so simple too you know because both of those both of the the uh, the small goals and the stop are simple things Yes. But, you know, it takes sometimes somebody on the outside looking in to say, okay, try this. Because, you know, and I always told my kids growing up, you know, hey, don't don't try to tackle the whole problem all at once. Try and break it down into these small bits. But when it came to my own issues, I was trying to take everything on at once. You know, and so so I had to learn again how to do the small goals and and all that. So, all right. Well, because we just want it to go away. Right. Right. We just want it to be gone. Right. And yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you've, you've gotten to a point where you, you've, you've gone through your therapy. You've, you've found that acting is going to be the thing that that's going to drive you. So how did yeah. you make the transition from being in high school plays to going out and becoming you know, the actor that we know that you are today? So I, you know, did it throughout high, high school and I was also in, um, all the choirs and all the show show choirs, basically anything that that you could do that that was per- performance. Okay. Then I took a lot of ballet classes uh, when I wasn't in school. Then I got my undergrad in acting, and then and then I was doing um, Shakespeare festivals over the summers. And then I went to go get my master's degree in acting in a uh, in. F- Florida, which I left early because I just wanted to get to work. So I came back to New York <laughs> in 2011 because I was sick of school. Um, and I thought I was going to be doing nothing but touring regional Shakespeare for my entire career. I did not think I was going to be doing any TV and film, period, at all. Um, but I got back to New York and there was all this TV and film here um, where there hadn't been before in 2011. Um, and I was like, uh, let's see if I can try this. I like movies. I like watching TV shows. Um, and I had heard from other actors that I knew that TV is a lot like theater, um, because you have a lot less time and you gotta be word perfect. 
uh, and things of that nature. And it turns out they were right. Uh, so it was pr- pretty, not easy, I won't say easy, right. but it was easier to apply my tr- training and move it over. And then I learned basically just by asking people, talking, um, like I began to do background work on TV shows and movies here in New York. Okay. And that taught me how to not be on set because most background actors are, uh, I, they're, they're not very good to have around. I don't know how else to say that, but, um, they're, mostly wonderful people and many of them this is how how they make their living but um a few of them taught me you know what they want to have is just a normal in person there and have a normal interaction and have a great time and that's what i took away from from that and i also learned how to do things like hit hit my mark where to be in camera things of that nature um and then i just was like what do i do now so i began to do lots of indie film lots of like NYU Tisch film so I could build up a mm-hmm. reel while I was working, you know, five other jobs. Like I was working in like a bagel store. I was working at a coffee shop, but you know, like all that stuff, just like sure. trying to make it work. Um, and then I got a job at the Metropolitan Opera where I work to this day, uh, where I do their hand to hand combat sword fighting work. And I'm also an actor in the operas. And I landed that. They loved me. I've, I've worked there since 2012, which is pretty cool. Um, and then along the way, I built up my reel, pulled in people like agents and managers and, uh, began, was auditioning and now I'm on the tick and I became a producer and I make, make my own TV shows and I write and I'm a model, which is weird. And I'm an audiobook narrator and yeah, <laughs> it's like, it's so cool and so crazy and amazing. And I'm so happy that I'm here. Yeah, absolutely. You've had a, you've had a nice career and, and you know, looking back, through your IMDb, one of the things I noticed is that, you know, for some actors who are just getting going, there's they have one job this year and then there'll be a while before there's anything else that they're um, whether they're accredited or uncredited for that role. There's, sure. there's something else. There, there's a gap there. You've been a pretty steady Eddie uh, since you've got yeah. since you got started. So that's kind of nice. You've been able to, to keep yourself going that way. I'm a little psychotic when it comes to my career. I'm 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 not gonna lie. Um, my c- c- colleagues tell me that I have a like a never-ending well of of like crazy energy when it comes to the acting career, and I've never noticed it before. But when I took a look outside, it's 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 true. Like I'll go to work, go to rehearsal, do a show, and then I'll be out like me like meeting people till like two in the morning, then I'll go home. Like it's, it's like, I mean, now I can't do that as much. Cause I just, I just, uh, I just had a daughter. Uh, yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. She's, she's been here for about a week. Yeah. So, um, very, 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 very so happy about that. Um, so uh, things need to change a little bit, but you know, obviously I can't be out till two in the morning anymore, but, but <laughs> I'll make it work still. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's fun. Yeah. And having a, a child, that's all, that's a whole, that's a whole nother, uh, story there. That's we'll circle back in a couple of years and see if you have bags under your eyes yet. And you know, <laughs> if- I have bags now, I just have really <laughs> great lighting right now. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. Well, it, they'll come the, the, at a certain point, the lighting won't hide them. Uh, that's true. <laughs> Oh, that's no congratulations in all seriousness. That's a that's a wonderful thing. Uh, happy for Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, so the, so you've you've had this nice career. You've 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 made some positive steps in your in your not only your personal life, your but your professional life. Looking back on it, though, if you could offer advice to people who have even one section of your story that's similar to their story, what would you what would you advise? Yeah, so I think about this all the time, and it's why I talk about it so publicly and so often is because I am in a position where I can maybe help people that are like like me, but so just because of what because I have platforms that I can speak on. But but I would just say just don't give up on anything. You can literally do anything that you want to do with your life. And and that's just not like a blanket thing that's like not not like you're a rainbow and you're 
you can do anything and uh, that's not just like you're like a rainbow and it's like a poster that that's like on a wall like it's like you are specifically equipped to do whatever you need to do with your life you can be as successful as you need to be because you have been right. so successful in the fact that you're still here so if you can take the lessons that you've learned from whether you've been homeless or you've been in foster care or you've or you're handling some sort of mental illness the power it takes to move forward and to keep going is some of the most powerful stuff in the world and once you can take that and view it as a as like a booster pack as like an as like putting in a battery into your chest um you'll be able to get whatever whatever you need in order to be yeah, okay, Whatever cool. You want. I like that. And I, yeah. I, one of the things I also noticed about your your story and the way that you were telling it um, is that, and, and I love this, by the way, is that you were able to recognize the importance of having both good and, and bad examples and that you found the good even in the bad examples as that, you know, you know, you were able to, and I call that finding the silver yeah. lining, you know, because even no matter what we do in life, there's going to be some areas of our life where where there's issues, there's, there's troubles. And, you know, uh, we can either sit there and, and, and think about how bad it is, or we can find the, you know, the good or the silver lining in it. Even when you're talking about your mother and some of the things that she went through using her example of, as, you know, the, Hey, this is what I don't want to be. This is the example of how not to raise a child. This is an example of how not to do this. Uh, and so I think it, it's, um, I think it's important that people learn how to, find that and identify that so that they can also move forward. And I think that's an important part of your story. Right. Well, you can literally learn from anything right. if that's how you view it. Right. So yeah, it, it'll take a while, like, especially if it's particularly tr traumatic, but there are things that you can pull out of every situation, which is what you just said. So yeah. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Since 1982, Vital Signs and Graphics has been helping professionals with all their image, logo, and design needs. Perhaps you're looking for signs and banners, truck and trailer lettering, business cards, brochures, or other image and marketing aids, Vital Signs and Graphics in-house design studio has you covered. From logos to apparel, start to finish, Vital Signs and Graphics has everything you need to look and feel professional. Call Rick at 231-652-3300. He'll get you noticed. And now back to Focused on Forward. All right. So, Josh, there's a couple questions I like to ask every single guest who's been on my show. Sure. Uh, so the first one is this. Looking back over the entirety of your experience, what is the single greatest lesson that you have learned? Oh, man. I would honestly say that um, I'm enough is a huge lesson that I had to learn that me being myself and me being okay with not being okay is okay. I, I, I don't know how else yeah. to say that. No, that's um, cool. For, for a long time, I like carried it around like a, like a cross or as my like, or as like an albatross around my neck. And once I was able to kind of like hurl that away and be like, this is just who I am, then that's when mm -hmm. it became easier for sure. Okay. No, that's a great answer. All right. And the second question, similar to the first one in its nature, looking back over the entirety of your, your story, what's the single greatest piece of advice that you were given? The only way out of your life is education, Joshua. I would say that that was the most eloquent and honest advice that I've ever gotten, honestly. Okay. No, that's good. Well, excellent. Well, guys, I, I hope that you were able to, to hear the, the honesty and, and, uh, uh, in Josh's story and, and, and seeing all the things that he's, he's gone through, but, but here he is and he's, he's found a way to become a, a person who's become focused on forward, a person who's very happy with, 
who they are, where they are in life, and and uh, and is now uh, creating new life. In fact, so that's even that's even cooler. So, Josh, if people are interested in finding out more about Joshua Schubart and and what you're doing and and all that, what are good ways for people to be able to look you up? Sure. So my I have a website. It's joshuashubart.com. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Josh underscore Schubart. Um, and you'll find I've got like a link tree and all of those things. That's like a link to everything. And you'll be able to find my new show after that. Actually, why I made after part of it is because of mental health. So it's a man who looks like me because I'm the lead um, who goes through a horrible mental trauma and then walks his way out of it. Not perfect, but better. Um, and that's kind of what it is in life too. And um, if you are like me and you're a larger dude who may not understand how to handle emotions, check, check this out because I think you'll be able to really, really connect with it. At least I hope Um, it's extremely humanistic and I think wonderful and people are really liking it, but that's part of the reason why I made the show. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Well, we'll make sure that we put uh, all that information down in the show notes so that people are able to to look it up. Cool. And guys, I, I I strongly suggest that you check out Josh's work. Um, if you're a fan of, of superheroes and comedies and things like that, uh, please check out The Tick on Amazon Prime. Please. You won't you won't be sad that you did. Nope. Uh, uh, Josh plays a gentleman by the name of Frank who works for Ramsey's the Fourth. Uh, which there's a whole joke there, but yeah, that's, that's a whole other thing, but uh, yeah, check that out. And then of course he, uh, his, his new show after. So Josh, thank you for being on focused on forward today. Thank you for having me. This has been fantastic. I've greatly appreciated it. All right, guys, that's going to conclude us today for focused on forward. Well, that concludes another episode of focused on forward to be a guest of focused on forward. You can reach us through Twitter at podcast fof through our facebook page named focused on forward or through email focused on forward at gmail.com we look forward to hearing each and every one of your stories that has yet to be told so until then be safe be kind and be loving to one another as you stay focused on forward